In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, uh, Amen. Uh, dear fathers, dear brethren, I'm so happy to be, be in Singapore today. I can say that for me Christmas is starting one week earlier. Uh, uh, I, I keep, as you know, a lot of fond memories of uh, this uh, city, of you in particular, of this chapel. And you know, the more I get old, the more I realize uh, how much I was lucky here among, among you. Yeah. The liturgy of the church is full of joy and full of expectation. Uh, the church is almost exploding, waiting for our Lord. Today, the 18th of, this, of December, in some countries, in Spain in particular, was the feast day of Our Lady of Expectation. It means the Church was waiting the birth of Our Lord with the same feelings of Our Lady, waiting for uh, the birth of Her Son. And in this uh, picture, with these feelings, there is this still, uh, until the, the last day of Advent, this outstanding figure of St. John the Baptist. Why St. John the Baptist is almost present every day during the liturgy of Advent? It's quite easy to understand. It is because his mission is the only one which re really matters. The mission to bring souls to our Lord. To make uh, everybody stick to our Lord. Out of love. Forever. He has disciples very attached to him. But as soon as he saw our Lord, he perceived our Lord from afar, he told them to follow him. He pushed them to him. And they became some of the apostles. What, uh, what he does, St. John the Baptist, to push souls to our Lord. Which are the means that he's using for this purpose, which is the unique one. First of all, he gives the examples. He gives the example through his life, life of penance, pushing away whatever could be an obstacle to this uh, union to our Lord. He gives the example and he's preaching penance. Right? Push away from you whatever is not uh, meant, is not confirmed to this union with our Lord. And he prepares his uh, disciples little by little Remember, after me, somebody is coming who is greater than me. I am not, uh, I'm not uh, worthy to bow, to kneel before him. And untie the sandals of him. And... Uh, as soon as our Lord shows up, he points out our Lord to them. Follow him. 
And from that moment, he has only one desire. To, little by little, disappear. To leave the entire, entire scene, the entire place to our Lord. A one word does summarize all the gospel. When he points out our Lord, his expression is still used by us. And it summarizes whatever we need to know about our Lord. All the preaching of St. John was there. Behold the Lamb of God. Why called our Lord the Lamb of God? Why he didn't choose, he didn't choose another expression? Why he didn't uh, deliver a long sermon? Just the Lamb of God. What he meant. Behold the one who, the, the, the only one who is spotless, innocent, without sin, holy. That's what the Lamb of God means. There is only one. During this year, several years, I was waiting for him only I prepared you to go after him to recognize him and meekness our Lord is holy and meek is attracting souls through his meekness he wants us it means it wants us to stick to him out of love and not out of fear why he wants to he wants us to stick to stick to him to follow him out of love and not out of fear because as long as we fear we are weak when we love we are ready to everything we can perform everything he can ask us everything when we love we are ready to do that but the lamb also means the victim. Our Lord is holy, spotless, meek, but he came into this world to carry our sins, to die as a victim. And you see, Christmas is the celebration of our Lord coming to this world as a savior. But remember, it's not just coming to this world as a savior to carry our sins and to pay for them. His work is much deeper. He goes farther. He comes into this world to pay for our sins, of course, and then he wants to achieve his work transforming each one of us, according to his, to his uh, sacred heart. He wants that uh, we are also innocent, spotless, out of penance, because uh, penance and charity, they purify our souls. He wants uh, us also to be meek like him, and in a way, also, to be a victim, following him, carrying our cross, which will, will never be heavier than what we can stand. You see what does it mean to be saved by our Lord? It means to be transformed into a part of our Lord. It means to assume in a way, his features. This is Christmas. This is what we are waiting for. This is the preparation to Christmas. That's what we, we need and what we want to be like him. Meek, 
to stick to him again out of love only. And when we reach that, when we get this grace, we receive this grace, everything will be easier. We will never lose our peace. We will never lose hope. We will carry our cross with joy. Because our Lord is greater. The joy is giving us. The consolation that His presence is giving us is greater than any, any trial, any problem. That's what we want. Let's uh, prepare Christmas with these dispositions. There is a special grace. You see, Advent, Advent gives us, prepares us uh, uh, through this disposition. And there is a special grace attached to these few days that uh, still, they separate us. Uh, they separate us from Christmas. The grace of this great desire, and our Lord will fulfill this great desire. He will respond more than we can ask, because uh, His grace and His consolation is exceeding, exceeding whatever we might expect that's Christmas. That's why Christmas is the main feast of joy. This is the source of joy. This intimate presence of our Lord in our souls, transforming us into Him. This is the first, the only actually source of uh, everlasting joy and you see why i say everlasting because in heaven we are not going to do anything else but to achieve perfectly this union with our lord why whenever we come to mass we receive communion is to start already this perfect union with him this union which will be perfect in heaven. Let's ask Our Lady to make us, un us understand better and deeper all this, and most of all, to prepare our soul, communicating to us uh, her, her feelings, her joy, her joy, her expectation, her desire to see our Lord, to embrace him, to stay with him, and to love him. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.